stay there until keep keep up five minutes. Okay, just take the route. Yeah, keep going back to the There he is. Did Bill come in? Yes. It was for Sally. Said she's at her workstation where she's supposed to be. No, not our. That's his own. Well, as you can see, when I came in here, I wasn't really on our side. And then you can see that I've got buttons, and, and, uh, and you've all talked me into it. <laughs> but, uh, but I welcome this chance, first of all, to say thank you to all of you. I. I know that some of you here, I have found out, um, were up all night and, uh, and working. I know the long hours that many of you have, have put in, and I can only tell you that uh, if I could manage it, I would schedule a cabinet meeting so that we could all go over and take a nap together. <laughs> But there isn't any. I know that I, all I should be doing is saying over and over again, thank you to all of you. I do know what you have been doing, and you young people particularly, from someone who was a governor back in the Vietnam days, uh, I can't quite get used to this. <laughs> but I am deeply moved by it. And uh, at the same time that I'm saying thank you, though, I have to tell you about one side of my nature, and that is uh, I go to bed at night, and my last thought is, what if everybody's reading the polls and isn't going to bother to vote? So the last big chore is get out the vote. And don't get so busy that you don't vote yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the one. I think of all those statistics of some past elections, like uh, the elections that were lost by less than a half a vote per precinct in the country that that could have changed the balance and all. And uh, I know I can't convince Worthland that we should hide the polls, uh, <laughs> but uh, just don't take them seriously until Tuesday. And then be running around. If it works out all right, you can say, I told you so. <laughs> but, uh, it's, uh, it's been a wonderful experience for me and an opportunity I welcome to thank you all. I know how many of you were volunteers and uh, it's just a few more days and I'm as nervous as you are tired uh, uh, so we'll sweat it out together but God bless you all and thank you I may do an encore. I know this is my last campaign, so uh, 
I'm going to, I know I'm accused also of telling anecdotes, but if you wondered why I should be nervous or anything in the face of all this, I'll tell you one little experience back from my sports announcing days. I think a fellow out at Ohio State named Show Em No Mercy Schmidt was the coach. <laughs> And he had a team that was said to be not only the greatest team in the country, but one of the greatest teams of all time. And I was the only sportscaster in the country, I think, that predicted that on that Saturday afternoon, Notre Dame would beat Ohio State. And we were broadcasting another a Big Ten game at the time. I happen to know that Notre Dame had lost their captain early in the season, and I mean lost him. He died of an injury. and. Uh, they had dedicated the Ohio State game to him. And I believed enough in the Gipper that I went for Notre Dame, and even though I hadn't played the Gipper yet. And, uh, but sitting in the press box, and it was, the scores would come in to us of other games, and they kept coming in, and it was Ohio State 13, Notre Dame nothing, with two minutes to play. And of course, the accompanying staff with me were having a lot of fun at my expense, silently, because the mics were on and we were broadcasting the game. Two minutes to play, and then the final came in. Notre Dame, 18, Ohio State, 13. Three touchdowns in two minutes. So uh, I want to be on that Notre Dame side in this election. <laughs> All right, thanks again very much. I better give this away. Chance to look at the priest in Poland that apparently was murdered by three security guards. I don't know any more than so at this moment than conflicting stories that are out, but at least now we know one story has been confirmed. This position of him by his suffering in his hands. We just keep on top of that. Well, have we made any representations? Certainly, I'm having a meeting with the Secretary of State this afternoon. 
not a medical discussion. Should Could we be saying something to the Sam? Should we be saying something to the Paul? You know, wait till after the meeting. What is your reaction to Desmond Tutu's criticisms of constructive engagement? The what? Your reaction to Desmond Tutu's criticisms of constructive engagement with uh, South Africa? Well, perhaps he isn't aware of all that we are doing. We're trying very hard and very quietly, but the quiet moments of time to meet him. Because obviously we find apartheid repugnant. And uh, yeah, there's, there are two ways you can go. You can rise up in indignation and turn your back, or you can try uh, to be of help in changing the situation. And that you don't put out on the front pages. You quietly go to work. Mondale says there are millions of silent Americans out there who are going to vote for him next Tuesday. Do you see that? Hey, Sam, I'm running scared. I'm not going to say anything. Uh, next Tuesday, uh, he can say what he wants to bolster him up, but maybe I get my fortification from coming and visiting with these wonderful young people here in the headquarters. Does it seem to you that people have really already made up their mind that, that Unless there's some catastrophic event this last week, whatever the situation is, is sort of set. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that because, as I told you, I'm running one boat, one boat behind. It feels better that way. What's the lead today? Sitting on your 25-point lead, comma, the president said he was running one boat behind. <laughs> it's only 20 points, Sam. The one thing that I disagree, the one thing that I've agreed with Mr. Mondale is, uh, is that the polls don't vote. People do. Thank <laughs> you.